and the dealer says to me, you can't sell that car for a hundred grand if you put 50 grand in the trunk in cash. And I was like, no, you're wrong. And I saved all these emails because I knew, I love being historically correct. I love being, I could be a little bit, you know, when you're negative to me, I'm like, okay, I want to prove you wrong. In 98, July 7th, I open up my business outside of a Coe Auto auction. And within six months, I grow into a 40,000 square foot fenced in piece of property, 10,000 square foot building, 20 employees. We got Scott Ailes, Uli and Blackburn. Anybody was a somebody in the exotic car wholesale world, running cars at a Coe, we got their business. Scotty came into my place one day and said, the reason I picked you of all the de detailers and recon businesses that want us is because your shop looked like a dentist office. I mean, we took pride in it. Mom, dad, sisters, brothers, in-laws all worked for me. I'm the youngest of four. My whole dream to leave Philadelphia was to do that. So we put a lot of passion in uh, setting cars up and getting acclimated in the exotic car world. My thing was, as a kid, I wanted to buy and sell Lamborghinis, Countach's. Saw Cannonball Run at six years old, went nuts in the middle of my mom and dad at the drive-in. My dad threw me out of the Cadillac and I watched the opening scene from outside the car because I was like a BB in a box car, just all over the place. From that point in my life, I knew I wanted to buy and sell Lamborghinis. I didn't know it was a business. I thought you had to be like prestige or a big dealership. I'm like, wow, that's a, it's gonna be a lot of work to get there. Then I see the Tom Cruise opening scene in Rain Man where he's on the phone hustling cars. My dad said, no, that's a business. It's a wholesale business. You can buy these cars pre-owned. So that was eighth grade. 10 years later, I moved to Florida, build a recon business, get all the Lamborghinis in. The goal to have a recon business wasn't because I was passionate about cleaning cars. I don't come from this line of business. My dad sold Chevrolets and he taught me sales because me and my dad were, I was the apple of his eye growing up. You know, I listened, I asked questions. In 06, eight years in business, I got a couple million dollars put away, I worked 20 hour days, Christmas, Easter, you know, being the youngest of four was the black sheep, uh, but successful. My family's making a paycheck. You know, I felt, I felt like I accomplished something. I buy a Ferrari Testarossa for when they were nothing. I buy it at a Coe auction. Everyone's telling me, oh, nobody wants those cars. Nobody at all wants those cars. What are you doing? I buy the car, I take it to the celebration car show where Jeff, has uh, the owner of the Cannonball Run car. Bring it out there. This I'm wiping the car down. I look like the detailer. This dentist comes up to me. He's like 50, 60. He's got a girlfriend. She's like 20. And he says to me, call the owner up. Tell him I want to buy the car because the car looks great. I said, it's not for sale. He says, I said, call the owner up. I said, okay. I'll call the owner up. The next morning I see him. I said, the owner said it's, and I give him the number, it's like $74,000. Well, let me think. I said, oh, so you don't have the money. I kind of insult him, you know, and, and the girl kind of smiles at me, you know, his little girlfriend. I said, so you don't have the money? He says, no, no, I got the money. He buys the car. I make three months check. By this time, I got an 80,000 square foot piece of property and 51 employees. So that's my first Testarossa. I sell the car fast, make myself a bunch of money. I'm like, holy cow. It takes two years to shut my business down. I do not want to run 50 employees no more. Now I'm like, okay, this was the goal. Do the recon, get to the buying and selling cars. Shut the business down finally, the shop side of it. I still kept the on-site auction cleanup, which was a fortune, we made a fortune doing that. Shop cost me money <laughs> when you looked at it. So I buy the test risk to get that done. I start buying. I said, this is what I wanna do. I buy 10 348s for about 25 to 30 grand, nice cars, at least, 15 308s under $25,000 with no miles, red tan, red cream, boxster trim, 10 Testarossas for around 33 grand each, you know, roughly I'm paying. Panteras I was buying for 25,000. Cannot find a Countach anywhere at all. So from 06 to 2011, October, never find a Countach online that made sense. I didn't, I don't even think I saw one online. My house has black mold, I get sick. 
I can't figure out what's wrong with me. I'm having respiratory problems. I'm sick all the time. I don't go out. I always say God knows what he's doing because if I didn't get sick, I wouldn't have found any of the cars. I'm in my office 20 hours a day. So I go to Auto Tempest. Somehow I end up on Craigslist and I start in alphabetical order, Bakersfield, California. What's the chances I find a Countach, four bad photos, call the guy up. He says he's 80 years old, bought it new, and he can't get in and out of the car. So he decided to sell it. How much do you want? $75,000. I never want to say yes, because then they think they left money on the table. So I said, can you throw in the shipping? No problem. Wire them to 75 grand. This car shows up, looks like we painted it with a brush. I'm like, okay, I could dial this car in. But I'm a little nervous starting it. Like my legs are shaking. I remember that day. Put the car away. Find another one like three weeks later. Find another one. I'm buying these cars at $75,000 now. Peter Kumar has an 83 5000S carburetor car, mint condition. How much? 75 grand. We throw in the freight, same thing. By the third car, I end up with 14 of them. I probably would have never sold those cars because I made enough money selling the other stuff. My dad says to me, he sits in the Countach. He's got a steak shop belly because he owned a steak shop at one time. And he can't get out of the car. And he goes, what did you pay for this car? I said, 75 grand. He goes, you're an idiot. He can't. I said, dad, I can get out of the car. You can't. Why am I the idiot? As my marriage is going to crap after 24 years together, I decide to put the car on the market. My dad says to me, Anthony, what makes you think these cars are two, 300 grand? I said, because there's no way I can afford 14 of my dream cars. Our generation, the guys I'm buying them from are all 70 years old, 80 years old. They said they bought them new. Those guys don't know how to use the internet like we do. So there wasn't, Haggerty said the cars were 50 grand. That's all they said they were. At this point, when I put the car on the market, I put it up there. I can't remember. It was like 200,000. I sell the car. But all the forum guys came at me. Who's this Monday morning quarterback? Johnny come like, I'm like, why are all these people so negative? I couldn't believe how that world is. When they don't know you and you're coming out and you're, oh, you bought the car for 75. Who do you think you are? I'm like, well, that's what the car's worth. I mean, I know what their cars are worth. Generations move the needle. Remember when Copo Camaros were a million dollars? When our fathers passed and left us the cars, we didn't want that car. We're not going to pay a million for that car. The price comes back down. Well, our generation, the X generation guys, postered on the wall. We got money now. So we're going to fight for these cars. So timing the market was easy when you looked at it that way. When you saw these Testarossa selling so cheap, like, oh, it's only a matter of time. Because I got all my money around 38 years old, 39. That's where I made, so started making some serious money. So acquiring these cars all at that time, it kind of makes sense. When that first one hit the market and there was nothing before that, and then the second one, the third one, you were hearing the same story. I'm older now, I can't get out of the car. So that's how I ended up with all those cars. So the first Countach that went up for sale was the 83 5000S. I bought off of Gullwing Motors for 75,000 bucks, mint condition. I couldn't believe when the car showed up how nice it was because the one I bought out of Bakersfield was rough for the same price. Car goes on the market for a premium. Phone rings, it's my birthday. I'm up at 5.30 every morning, not my birthday. I slept in late. I think I had some tequila the night before. So it's like 10, 11 o'clock, phone rings. Thought it was a joke. I'm interested in buying a car. I said, somebody's pulling a prank on me. I remember the TV on in the living room, vacuum running. So I go in my closet and I'm trying to negotiate the deal, holding the phone quietly, holding my ear. And he's, for 10, 15 minutes, he's trying to knock like, 50 grand off the car, then 15 grand off the car. And I will not negotiate. I said, this is the price. It's like bread when you go to 7-Eleven. Whatever's on the bread, you pay when you get to the counter. He says, I'll take the car. Get a phone call. Hi, Tony, this is the money exchange guy for the purchase of the Countach. And he says, do you know who you sold the car to? I said, no, some guy, some guy, I don't know. He was overseas. He said it was the ruler of Qatar. That guy negotiates everything. And he said, you were the toughest negotiator he ever sell, you dealt with. He's, you didn't take a penny off the car and he knew you paid for it, you know? The, the crazy part about it was, how do you sell the Countach on your birthday? Your dream car, you sell for a record high to the ruler of a country 
on your birthday. So for me, it's so easy to say this had nothing to do with me. Look, when it comes to blessings like that, there's no way. I'm not that smart. I just figured as a kid, I remember laying in bed dreaming of the lines of that car. I didn't have a magazine. I couldn't afford to DuPont registry in Philadelphia when I was a kid. Based on a cannonball run and a matchbox car, I would lay down at night and think about the lines of the car and talk to God about this stuff. So the fact that I was able to be part of these cars in the marketplace, have so many of them, to sell one on my birthday to a ruler of a country just goes to show you that it's a blessing from love. I remember calling a big dealer, a Lamborghini dealer, and saying, hey, why don't you put the car on consignment at your pace? I'll, 150, I'll take, and you should ask 200. And the dealer says to me, you can't sell that car for 100 grand if you put 50 grand in the trunk in cash. And I was like, no, you're wrong. And I saved all these emails because I knew, I love being historically correct. I love being, I could be a little bit, you know, when you're negative to me, I'm like, okay, I want to prove you're wrong. The last two I bought was the downdraft from Bob Liff and the Series 2 low body from Roy Cash for 155. That, that was a great story. Guys were calling me up saying, I'll give you 80 grand for the car. I'm like, 80 grand when I was buying the 75K cars. I'm like, where are you coming up with 80 grand? I'm asking 200. Well, I'm not going to let you make that kind of money off of me. Oh, really? Is that how this works? Well, I'll let you make five grand. Okay, what if my dad gave me the car? That shuts them right up because they're like, oh, what are you going to give me five grand for the car at this point? So I think by the time I started putting the first 12 on the market, that's when the last two were bumped from 155 to 160. I don't even think the downdraft at that time was worth that. But when the dealer saw what I was asking, they're like, uh, let's just put it up there. And I ended up buying Roy Katz car and the Gary Boblev car, which I would have kept those two cars if it wasn't for the divorce. Yeah, time in the market for me was about watching the generations come into money. It was roughly a million dollars tied up in all the cars. And then when everything was said and done, it was, we turned it into $3 million. So it was a, it was a 200% return. From 2012, when the separation started, until the last one I sold in 2000, I, know, I sold them all in 2012. I think all the cars were sold, I believe, in one year because I bought my first one October 2011, and I had all 14 by 2012, and then started selling them in 2012 and had them all sold before I moved to Palm Beach in 2013. I had two left. I had the, the low body car and a side draft car, which I was keeping. But then the way things got, I said, I can't, you know, I didn't want this to get ugly. I get a call from the guy that buys, he, I don't want to say who it is, but he has 25 of them. He has one of every year. And he says, son of a bitch, you were right. I'm walking out. In fact, I get in a fight with a car dealer who, who was disrespectful over my divorce, he went and said something. My wife was at the auction. He said, you know, Tony's got a new girlfriend or something and he ruffling feathers. So I went in his office and I said, why would you do that? And we kind of got into it and he owed me money. I said, why don't you pay me the thousand bucks you owe me? So he pays me the money and then I'm a God person. I put everything in the Lord's hands. He said something to me like, I'm going to ruin your name in this business. And I'm like, why would you say something like that? Like, what I ever do to you? Sure enough, I end up on the front page of Ferrari Market Letter because I had a police car out of a 348. So I'm on the front page. Jim Weed writes a nice story and says, hey, uh, Tony had all the kids climbing in the car at Celebration Car Show. Well, that detailer for that dealer calls me up and says, man, you got the owner pissed. I said, what do I do now? He says, you're on the front page of the Ferrari market letter and it's on his desk and he's in a bad mood and I know that's what it is. Not long after that, my phone rings. It's Sunday, I come out of church. And it's this big Lambo collector. And he says, son of a bitch, you were right. I said, what'd I do? He said, a Countach just sold at Monterey for a million dollars. And it wasn't running. They pushed it across the block. Tony, how did you know this? Because when he bought the pair from me, I sold him a pair for like 360. Roy Katz car I bought for 155. I sold it for 225. And I didn't negotiate that car. And I said to him, look, if you want to buy the pair, I'll sell you the pair for 360. I'll make a few bucks on the, I think that was the one car I broomed. I made a 20 grand maybe on it. But I said, the low body, I want 
the 70 grand profit on the car. I don't, if not, I'm gonna wait and put it away and get 300 grand. So he buys the pair and I, I spent an hour on the phone with him and I'm telling him these are gonna be a million dollars in five years. It wasn't but a year and a half later when he called me up and said, first off, you're on the front page of the, the market letter. Second off, how did you know this with these cars? The car just did a million and that's how we, uh, he called me to Kuntash King. So when hashtag Kuntash King was floating around, I would get, who do you think you are calling yourself that? I said, I didn't call myself that. The guy that listened to me and purchased a car, he named me that. But you know, it comes down to this. I'm all about the Lord. I'm no saint, but I'm, everything that's happened is God blessing me. As a kid, I loved that car like we all did. And the fact that I was a part of something, like these, the price spike and timing the market just means that that's why I said I had to go through hell to get to heaven. At the best part of my life, I went through the worst part of my life and it ended like a dream. I'm super pumped to announce that in 2024, VinWiki is partnering with Bridgestone. So throughout the year, you're gonna hear some great stories from their business, some awesome tire testing and things like that that we're gonna do. I've had a lot of Bridgestone and Firestone products over the years and loved them all. I know that you will too, but I want you to check out their Potenza line of tires for sports cars, supercars, and hypercars. Whatever your needs, whether it's ultimate track performance, road performance, or all season performance, there is a Potenza tire for you. So check them out at the link in the description below and let us know what you think.